Welcome to Automation of the Week. Today, I'm gonna to build upon a flow that we've already created that automatically generates asset records when an opportunity is closed one. And it does that by referencing the line items on that opportunity. If you don't know what I'm talking about, we have a video that's linked in the description below that'll show you how to build this in front of me here and do exactly that. We also have another video that shows you how to modify this flow if you wanna create a different asset record whenever the quantity on a line item is greater than one. You might wanna do that if you wanna track unique serial numbers against the products that you're selling to your customers. But today we're actually gonna do the opposite. So instead of us creating you know, a lot of asset records for those line items, we're gonna try and create as few asset records as possible. So when an opportunity is closed one, we'll check to see if that product is already an asset on the account. And if it is, we'll just increase the quantity based on how much they purchased rather than creating a whole new asset record for that product. This could be valuable for you if you operate like a software company that sells licenses on a contract. Most of the time, if they're in the middle of the contract and the customer wants to purchase additional licenses for their company, they're not going to create a whole new contract. They usually just add those extra seats to the contract that they already have. And when it comes to assets, we might not want to create a whole new asset record either. Instead, let's find that licensed product related to their account and add to that quantity, showing that they've increased their spend and that you know, we owe them uh, increased access to that software. Works well for other sorts of services too. Okay, let's get into it. A quick overview of the way this flow operates. When that opportunity is closed one, it starts. We then get all the line items related to that opportunity. We loop through each one of those line items and take the values from the line item, assign it to a new asset record, and then add that asset record to a collection where ultimately at the end of the flow, we create all those assets at once. One thing to remember is that this asset variable within our flow is not yet committed to the database. And you wanna have as few database actions as possible to keep your flow fast. So what we're gonna do is not only get the line items, we're also gonna get the existing assets related to the account that's related to the opportunity. And we'll still loop through each one of those line items and we'll add an additional loop inside of this one. So we'll loop through each of the line items and then we'll loop through each of the assets that already exist, checking to see if there's a match. If we find that there's a match, we'll have a little decision that sends us down a path that just updates that existing asset record and puts that in our collection for updating. And if there is no match, then we'll do the same thing we already did here, which is to add those values to a new asset record to be created. And then ultimately at the end here, we'll still have our create assets element, but we'll have another one too, which is gonna be the update assets element. And so it's gonna update anything that's existing. If there are no existing assets, then it won't have any records to update. And so it'll just pass right through that element without an issue. First thing we need to do is add another get step to get the assets that are related to the account. So I'm gonna call this get assets. For the object, obviously we wanna get an asset object. And the way we're gonna know that we're getting the asset that matters is by getting all of those records where the account ID is equal to the account that's related to our opportunity. So scroll down to our global variable for the opportunity here, click on that. And you can see within these fields, we have the related account show up right at the top. I'm not actually gonna click on this particular one because it'll just take me to the account record and show me additional fields. Instead, if you scroll down a little bit further, here's that same account ID field. It just doesn't have that you know, little carrot on the right-hand side that shows you more stuff. So that's the one I want. That's got the account ID number in it. And that's gonna ensure that we're getting all of the assets related to that specific company or account. Make sure you select all records down here so we don't just get one of them. You can close that get asset step there. Then go just below the loop through product step and let's add another loop. And we'll say loop through assets. Our collection variable is gonna be the assets variable that we just created. And here you can see we have a loop within a loop. Next thing we're gonna do is add a decision element within this new loop that we just created. What we wanna know is if that asset already exists. So I'm just gonna write that question in here. Does asset already exist? Our default outcome will be no, it doesn't exist. 
our new outcome will be yes, it does. And then our conditions here are going to be comparing the two items that are in our loop together. And we can compare them by the product that they're related to. So you scroll down here, you can see under record variables, we have current item from loop asset and current item from loop opportunity line item. I'm going to start with the opportunity line item and then go down to product two, which is also the product ID. And then we're going to do a very similar thing for the value here, except instead of looking at the line item, we're looking at the asset that's in our loop. The field actually has the same name, which makes that pretty convenient, product ID. In this decision element, we're comparing the product ID in our line item to the product ID of our current asset. If there is a match, it's gonna come over here to the left. And what we wanna do here is just update the quantity on our existing asset record, and then make sure that we take that asset and put it in a new collection, and that's just gonna be the records that we update. So add an assignment step here. And in this assignment step, we can say, update asset quantity and add to new collection. Choose the current item from loop asset, because we just identified that this asset matches one of our line items in our opportunity. So that's what we're gonna update. Select that and go down to the quantity field. From here, we can click the add operator, and then we can go to our current line item and the quantity field there. And we're just adding whatever that number is to the current quantity of that asset. So that's pretty simple. And now in our next step, we're gonna add it to a collection. Well, we need to create that collection resource. So hit new resource, select variable, and we'll call this updated assets. The data type is a record. Make sure you check the box to allow for multiple values. So it's a collection. And then the object is of course an asset object. And for our updated assets collection, we wanna make sure that we're gonna add our current item from loop our asset record, the one that we just updated the quantity for within our flow. We're gonna take that, so you don't wanna select any of the fields, just select it and with the add operator, and it's basically gonna take a copy of that and put it in a basket for later. Once we found a match for a line item, we don't need to keep going through the loop. It would be a waste of time. So we wanna exit this loop. So click the little plus sign here that says connect to element, and we're gonna exit this loop within a loop by going back to the loop that's outside of the loop that we're in. So we're just gonna come back here to where our loop through product started, which is going to then have us go through our next product. And we're gonna do the same thing again. So if that's confusing, let me walk through it one more time. We've gotten all of our line items. We have all of our products for a new opportunity. And then we're gonna take them one at a time. And so we let's say we have product A here, and then we're still on product A. We're then going to loop through each of the assets that already exist. And we're gonna to check to see if that asset product matches product A's product. And if it doesn't, we're gonna then go to the next asset that exists. Maybe it still doesn't match. So then we go through again, still doesn't match product A, still doesn't match product A. For as many assets are there as there are. So if you have a ton of assets related to an account, this is gonna be a lot of looping that's happening. And let's say that it never finds a match. So we've gone through all of the assets that already exist. Well, then we're gonna exit this loop here because there's no more assets for us to go through. So after our last asset that is not a match, here we're assigning values to an asset variable and we're adding that to a collection, which isn't gonna create that new asset record. But let's say that we do find a match somewhere in that pile of existing assets. We'll come to the left here. And in this one step, here, we're updating that asset variables quantity and we're adding it to a collection, a new one for our updated asset records. And then there's no reason for us to continue this loop at all. We found a match for our line item. So in that case, we're gonna come back up to our top level loop here, which is then gonna move on to the next product that we had added on the opportunity. And then finally, we'll create the assets here. We'll add one more step to update our existing assets. So choose update records, call this update existing assets. Choose the third option to just update records in a collection and then select the updated assets collection that we just created. Click save as and activate. We can debug this here and we can also test it in our test environment. So we look at our raised real estate account. We have two assets on our 
account currently, a thousand kilowatt generator with a quantity of one and a service level agreement with a quantity of one as well. Let's go into an opportunity. I'm gonna back this out of the closed one status so that we can just trigger the automation again. And I'll remove our service level agreement. Let's say this is a you know, add-on opportunity. They're getting additional uh, generators. So they're clearly getting two additional ones, or maybe this could be they're getting two extra seats for software, something like that. And then let's update this to closed one. What we should see is the asset record on the account should now have gone from a quantity of one to a quantity of three. Click on the account name, come down to our assets, and there you can see that the quantity has increased. Let me know in the comments if this was a useful video. I think we're getting kind of into the weeds of these workflows, but let me know if you'd like us to continue making videos like this. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.